viruses are the most abundant biological entities on Earth, and, and it's really important to understand more about them. What we are trying to do is uh, using computational approaches to discover uh, viruses, to study their distribution on Earth, to link with their host when that's possible, and then trying to use them for, for some biotechnological applications. CRISPR is part of the immune system of bacteria. So I know you don't tend to think about it that often, but bacteria also get sick. They have viruses that can kill them. And as any living organism, they try to protect themselves. And they have this CRISPR-Cas system, which is an adaptive immune system. They can actually teach from the infection they had which viruses attack them and then protect themselves on the next time they encounter the same viruses. We, as biologists, were able to take this system and now use it ourselves in order to edit virtually any genome that we want to change any gene in them. It's a single protein that acts as a, as a scissor. It recognizes a sequence that we are providing in order to make a clean cut into any kind of genomic sequence. It, it might be human genome, but it might be also be plant genome. The CRISPR-Cas9 technology is not the, the feature revolution, it's the, it's the actual revolution. This is definitely a revolution in the way both of medicine and the way we do biological research. The ability to edit genes might help us to create better crops, which will help us just to grow more food for the world, might help us to fight genetic diseases, and might help us to better understand what the organisms around are doing. And there are many different uh, kind of diseases that they are uh, trying to fix uh, with the CRISPR-Cas system from HIV, uh, hepatitis. We can study cancer cells and remove each one of the gene in the cancer cell and see how it reacts to different treatments. In order to be able to read the genome of uh, microbes from the environment, we need to sequence billions of DNA letters that allow us to read this, uh, this data. So in order to actually do an analysis, you need millions of hours of compute resources. So take your laptop, run it for an hour, and multiply that by a million. Scientists don't necessarily even know how much compute power they're accessing to make a result happen. But odds are that you're going to have to go through the millions and billions of microbes that we have in our databases to actually find what it is that you're looking for. The only way you can do that is with large-scale computing resources.